typically in this segment you will find that the interiors uh, are somewhat compromised though it's getting better and better but if you go into the interior of this vehicle you'll almost think you're in a car uh, in terms of highway design the ip the seat the bucket seats that we've used elr seat belt that we've used the visibility that you get from the from the window screen we've used disc brakes for example that uh, you will not see in a, in, a, in a vehicle of this size so we have given a lot of detail uh, and attention to to occupant uh, comfort and if occupant is comfortable, then the vehicle accidents are less. The vehicle accidents are less, of course, and that leads to higher safety. Uh, the fact that we are given it a, a, a semi-forward uh, design also adds to safety, both perceived safety as well as real safety. And so overall, we have designed this vehicle for to, to make it to make it very operator friendly to to and and then of course to give a very good business benefit, 30% better profit, higher profit in the highest segment. Uh, is something that we have worked on by virtue of lower price, by virtue of lower maintenance cost, by virtue of higher fuel efficiency. So again, focusing on the business result, focusing on the operator comfort and safety is what we and, and giving power of choice is what we consider as the path breaker in this vehicle. Uh, doctor, I just wanted to get a sense: what is our current market share in the uh, LCV segment, LCV and SUV segment, and with this whole new range, uh, what kind of market share are we aiming at? Okay. So uh, this uh, vehicle is going to get. Uh, customers from three sub-segments, the current large three-wheeler segment where Mahindra has a presence and the current uh, small or what we call micro truck where Mahindra has a very, very small presence and the current mini truck where also Mahindra has a presence. Uh, our combined market share in these three segments together is about 16% right now uh, on a volume uh, a a volume size of about 230, 40,000 uh, vehicles. That means we are selling about 38,000 vehicles in this, in this range uh, and since we are 16%, even without the market growing, uh, we have a potential of increasing the market share by appealing to the three sets of customers, the three-wheeler customer, the micro-truck customer, and the mini-truck customer. So any, any targets of market share uh, you, uh, you want to get to in, say, in the next couple of years? Target is always as high as possible. Uh, I will not uh, want to hazard a guess on the, what the market share will be. Uh, but if I was a customer, I would find this a very, very good value proposition and uh, the brief that we had given to our teams was that uh, once you look at this vehicle rationally there should be no reason to buy anything else and I think uh, we have uh, fulfilled that brief uh, again uh, the purchase price, the fuel efficiency, the maintenance cost, the power of choice, the, the, the overall profit generation that this vehicle will do. So, uh, talking about the whole uh, small commercial vehicle space, uh, despite of all the other segments now growing, whether it be MNH, CV, whether it be passenger vehicles also, the SUV space uh, has continued to see degrowth. Uh, what is your view on the segment? One, what is leading to the degrowth? And two, obviously, uh, by when do you think the whole uh, segment will come out of the degrowth phase? I have a very simple explanation of why degrowth is there. Degrowth is there because the growth when it happened was very high. Uh, and it was somewhat unsustainable. Uh, everybody, that was sort of the flavor of the month. Everybody went out and bought a mini truck or a micro truck, and that's the reason it got saturated. And we are kind of paying the price in the last two years for very heavy growth that happened in the previous year. Now I think that's kind of getting stabilized, and with the agriculture economy uh, likely to be good this year, uh, and uh, more and more e-commerce coming in, and this kind of vehicle is excellent for e-commerce, uh, uh, including grocery delivery, uh, and your package delivery and, and so on and so forth, I would expect a turnaround to happen. But again, I will not hazard a guess on whether it's going to happen in three months, six months or one year. As far as we are concerned, we would like to see it happen from today. Uh, I'm sure, Doctor, the onset of monsoon uh, and, and the timely monsoon uh, will uh, would have really eased you a lot of stress. Uh, uh, how do you see this whole monsoon progressing and what kind of impact do you think it will have on the whole uh, automotive industry? Uh, I think uh, you're absolutely right that uh, that there was a lot of pressure that everybody had uh, because of monsoon and uh, especially for Mahindra because mm, two of our core businesses, uh, the tractor business and, uh, and and a fairly large portion of the automotive business, especially the low commercial, small commercial vehicle business, is dependent on monsoon is this year because agriculture will depend on monsoon this year. So we are relieved undoubtedly. Uh, right now signs are that uh, we will have uh, uh, normal monsoon or maybe even normal plus. Right now signs are there for sowing will be good. Right now signs are there for uh, overall agriculture output will be good. And that's good for the economy. That's good for companies that are playing in this uh, rural economy. So we are relieved. Uh, now what effect it has, we'll have to wait and see. The last time uh, we uh, spoke, uh, Doctor, you said that the 5 to 8 percent of growth in the tractor segment you are expecting. Now, uh, with the new, with, with monsoon now timely, uh, will you change the targets? No. So what we had said all along is that if monsoon is reasonably good, 
then we will get 5 to 8 percent, right? So, so monsoon is reasonably good, and that's why we, therefore, we expect that we will get the 5 percent growth that we have talked about. Talking about the tractor industry, sir, one obviously one easing factor has been the monsoon, but uh, talking about new products and new launches, what kind of uh, launches are we seeing, uh, expecting the tractor platform? Well, tractor uh, industry is like a small commercial vehicle industry. You don't see lots of new launches happening. Uh, we had launched a new tractor last year uh, called Arjun Novo, which was a very successful tractor, a high-tech tractor, and takes us forward in technology space also. Uh, we do expect to launch uh, one new tractor every year uh, for next three years, uh, both for Mahindra brand and the Swaraj brand. And that's what, the, and therefore, three years from now, we would have had six new tractors launches uh, between our two brands that we have, Mahindra and Swaraj. I'll end our conversation with uh, a question on the UV space. A lot. Uh, now people are expecting a new platform, a new car to come. By, by when can we see the new Mahindra car to come? Well, uh, we uh, have nothing has changed from the last time that we had talked. Uh, I have talked about launching nine products, three new platforms, three major refreshes, three minor refreshes. We have launched one major refresh, which was the XUV500. We are launching one new platform today, uh, which is the P601 platform or Jito vehicle. We have two new platforms coming, and we have uh, five more uh, refreshes coming. So that's uh, that. We just will happen during this year. When is the new SUV with a new platform for MNM coming? Just wait and see. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for talking to us. Okay. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.